Aleph Zion. Aleph Zion. Am I wrong? Wait, hold on a second. Um, that was yesterday. That was um, Aleph Zion. Yeah, that's right. Aleph Zion is yesterday. Right. And that's exactly what we're going to do for Zaran. So I'm doing, uh, that's right. I'm doing Aleph Zion. That's right. Bait ba base is you. Okay. All right. That's why you get paid the big bucks. Okay. I got it. All right. Let me see. Get rid of this. Okay. Uh, Reb Shimon ben Menasya says, what is referred to as a twisted thing cannot be made straight. One who has an illicit relationship and begets a mamza. Were you to say that the reference is to one who steals or robs, this could be not the meaning since he can make restitution and thus make it straight. Reb Shimon ben Yochai says, we do not call one twisted unless he, has initially, he is, was initially straight and then, excuse me, and then became twisted. And who is this? This is a scholar who forsakes the Torah. The regulations governing release from vows hover in the air and have no firm scriptural support. Certain laws of, the, of Shabbos, Chagiga, and Amila are like mountains suspended by a hair, for there are few scriptural references and many laws. The regulations governing property law, the sacrificial services, purity and contamination, and illicit relationships have firm scriptural support, and all of these are essential to the Torah. So whether the so whether the, your halachas are things that are that are clearly based in explicit psukim in the Torah, or whether they're just like hints, or whether they're things like Hataras Nadarim, which has absolutely no basis in in the written Torah, um, all of it is the is Gufe Torah. They're all um, of equal standing. We may expound neither on the subject of illicit relationships to a group of three, nor on the account of their creation to a group of two, nor on the account of the mechava. Uh, to an individual unless he is wise and understanding through his own knowledge. Whoever speculates on four things, it would be better for him that he not come into the world. What is above, what is below, what was before, and what will be after. Similarly, whoever has no regard for the honor of his maker, it would be better for him had he not been come, had he not come into the world. Okay. Okay. Yossi ben Yoezer Omer Shilolismov. Okay, so now this uh, this Mishnah over here is talking about the subject of whether you do smicha on Yom Tov. When you have a korban to bring on Yom Tov, do you lean on the animal or not? Why is there a shayla? Because the animal, you're not supposed to be um, take, taking an, an advantage of it, using it. And here you're leaning your entire your entire body weight on the uh, on the animal, and therefore. Um, and, and, and therefore, it, there's a question, should you do this, should you do this smicha on the animal on Yom Tov, okay? We also then, you know, is there a So he says, um, so I go through all the couples over here. Um, the, remember, we have the couples, there's the Nasi and the Av based in. Um, okay, so that um, Yossi ben Yosef says, don't do smicha, Yossi ben Yosef, and I know really smoke. He says, no, you do do smicha. Then the, the next pair, each one, uh, so we, by the way, you might recognize all of these pairs from the beginning of Greek Avos. Oh, that's right. With all of the, uh, with all of the pairs who, who carry down the Masora, and, um, and they, they're each here showing their opinions in, in Smith or not. You would have been Tabai Omer, Shilolismoch, Shimon Bin Shata, Homer, Nismoch. So here, in all three of the first cases, um, the the first one being the the nasi and the and the second being our best in as the end of Mishra will tell us uh, it, it, it seems to be received from their predecessors the the, mm -hmm. the sorry that uh, the, the nasi says don't do smitha and the our best in says do do smitha shmaya omer lismoch avtalion omer shilolismoch but then we have a switch for the shmaya and avtalion where now the nasi says do smitha and avtalion says don't do smitha hilel umenache lo nech lekru so Hinel was the Nasi and Menachem was the Av based in for some time. And for a while there was there was uh, a consensus. Yatza Menachem and Ichnas Shamai. So Menachem uh, left the left the, uh, the the position of Av based in and was replaced by Shamai. And Shamai said, listen, we've got to have a good enough locus over here. So in Shamai Omer Shilolismoch. And Hilal Omer Lismoch. So um so we, we, we still have this, uh, so we, again, we have a machlokas. In fact, what happened to Menachem? Interesting, he was, he was the Av, av based in, um, and there are different opinions as to what happened, uh, as to what happened to him. Um, some say that he went to, um, to serve uh, King Herod. Um, and 
whether because the uh, shem shemayim or shelo the shem shemayim, they also there's also machlokes about this because uh, some people also say that he that he uh, that you know, some people say that he went um, that he went off the derech. Okay, um, I don't know. Some people say that he that that he went into the service of, of Herod in order to in order to serve Amishal, but he couldn't be that based on at the same time. Anyways, Harishanim um, Ushlim Lahem Avos based in. So the second one in the pair is is invariably the, the Av based in, and uh, you see how the Mafak is carried through. Mishnah Gimel based Shamai Omrim may be in Shlamim, but in some Chin Alehem Aval Lo Olos. So so Beis Shammai, so as we said with Shammai, uh, he said that you don't do smecha on Yom Tov. He says, nonetheless, you can bring the shlamim, you can bring your shlamim on, um, on Yom Tov, because uh, shkheta is motar for, for what you're going to eat, and shlamim you're going to eat. But in some chinalim, but you can't do the smecha. Baba lo olos, don't bring olos on, on, uh, on Yom Tov, because you... Um, because you can't, uh, you, because, because you, you're not going to eat them, and uh, therefore they don't, they're not doche, they're not doche the yamtub. Ubez hilal omrim, may be shlamim veolos, the son him alehim. But they, it says, Bez hilal, you bring both korbanos and you're allowed to do smicha on both of them. That's okay. the halacha then. Yeah, yes, Bez hilal is invariably the halacha, unless we have a specific, uh, right. unless we have a specific exception to the case. Um, now, there is um after smuchale motor in them. Okay, but um okay, but when it comes, but this is talking specifically about the Olas Ra'ia. Right, okay. the, the one that's a mitzvah sayon. Okay. There the, that's where they agree that uh, that you can um um so 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 beg your pardon, basically I'll say that you can bring those on the Yom Tov, but and the Olos. Well, hang on, do, do, does Beis Shammai say you can't? Oh, you can't bring Olos Yachid. The Pisha Kulan is there. I feel like Olos Ria, Shehin, Tzorachayim, En Hakava Yom Tov, Ela B'Shar Yom Asar Regel. So yeah, so Beis, Beis Shammai say that even the Olas Regel, even the um, the the Olas Ria, the one the one that's 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 obligatory, right? That isn't brought on Yom Tov, says Beis Shammai. That's brought on on Cholam Oed or or Shavuos. It's brought you know in the days following the Yom Tov. Okay, and Beis Hillel say no, it must be brought on the day, and you do smicha on it as well. Um, so it's it's, it's sort of a, it, there are two machlokes in that that are going into this discussion. Um, there's one is do you bring the the olasriya on Yom Tov, and two is do you do smicha on it. So we already know what they hold about the smicha, but what we're also learning is that Beis Hillel say that you bring the you bring the olasriya on Yom Tov, where Beis Shammai say you don't bring it on Yom Tov. It doesn't override Yom Tov because it's not uh, because it's not eaten, and therefore the shechita is for uh, is is not permitted. Remember, uh, oh, you know what? I, I just realized now this ties in perfectly with the other machlokes of Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai. Remember Ochel Nefesh, right? So when we're talking about Ochel Nefesh, uh, Beis Shammai say the only thing that's permitted, the only malach is the stuff that you're literally going to eat. And Beis Hillel right. say mitoch. No, since since you're permitted to carry food into the street for the purpose of whatever, you're also allowed to carry other things into the street. You're, you're allowed to carry your, your glasses into the street. You're allowed to carry your, your talus into the street, uh, whatever you, you need it. Okay, that's, that's fine. So this is the, that's the, that's the machlokas. It's, it's video of that machlokas because, um, because the ola, you know, the shlamim in Beis Shammai say, yeah, you can shech the shlamim. That's fine because you're going to eat it. But the ola you can't shech because that's going on the Mizbech. It's not ochel nefesh. This, and Beis Hillel will say, but mitoch. Since you're allowed to do shechita for ochel nefesh, you're also also allowed to do shechita for the mizbeach. You hear that? Right, I hear. Right, I see it. But when you say use the word matok, matok means sweet, doesn't it? No, mat, not not with a with a kuf with a with a chaf at the end. Mitok. Oh, mitok. Okay. Okay. All right. The one do I don't get. Mitok she hutcha le 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 tzorich ochel nefesh hutcha shelo le tzorich. So since it's since that, that's the term that we use um, for uh, oh, well, because cool. it is permitted for for ochel nefesh, it's also permitted for. Uh, There's a chet. There's a chet at the end. Let me talk. Let me talk. I wonder I get the wrong thing in the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> I think they know what I mean. <laughs> so okay, but we had the thing uh, with the, the uh, what we have. I was going to ask about the all those three. So he's saying that you, you you can't do this on on Yom Tov. You can you can 
you can't lean on Yom Tov. That's that's Beth Shammai, correct? That's Beth Shammai. That's, but in, but the the other day, the rest of the day, if they call them out, you can do it. You can of course, of course. So you're, you're allowed to do you're allowed to do the as long as the Torah, the, the Torah, the Yom, the, there's no problem with doing Smith there. Okay. Says yes. That's all. Right. right. What what they do agree on, however, is that for voluntary sacrifices, even Beis Hillel agrees that you can't bring a voluntary Ola on Yom Tov. It's only because there's a mitzvah say Yom. Um, that uh, that you have uh, that, that you can bring the olas re'ia on on yom to says beisham beis hilal but uh, but for for regular korbanos um, you you could bring them another day so why are you bringing them today after and that's uh, and that's again the, uh, the 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 principle of Rabbi Akiva is that you can only, you can only do malacha on Shabbos or yom to you know that when 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 you have a malacha that that's motzar for another reason where that overrides Shabbos or yom to you can only do it if you couldn't have done it before Yom Tov. Before, before, right. In this case, you can't do it after Yom Tov. There's no, there's no flaming urgency for you to bring your Ola Dakka on Yom Tov. Bring it on Cholamoid. Okay. Okay. Atzeres um, shechala liyos for Erev Shabbos. Now, what happens if Shavuos falls on Erev Shabbos? Okay. So we can already predict what's going to happen. They're going to say you can't check things on on the Yom Tov. In other words, the 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 uh, Okay, you can't check it on the Yom Tov. You also can't check it on the Shabbos. So you have to do it on the Sunday. Okay. Nonsense. You do the the on Yom Tov exactly as we learned in the previous Mishnah. You can do the shkita on Yom Tov. No problem. However, if the if the um, if if the Yom Tov falls on Shabbos, then Beis Hillel agree. You don't have to shecht it on the on the on the Shabbos. And shechting on Shabbos is a different thing from shechting on Yom Tov. There you've got to shechting on Yom, Yom Tov. You're allowed to shecht a personal animal for you know to, to eat on, on Yom Tov. That's permitted. But on Shabbos you can't do that. So the same thing over here. There's no there's no zman katsuv that you have to bring it on on the Yom Tov. Since you can bring it after after Shabbos, you, you should bring it after Shabbos, and, you, and there's no here to, to shech the animal on Shabbos. The only animals that you can shech on Shabbos are the ones that are that that have a zman katsuv that it has to be done on that day. So, if, for example, korban Pesach, if you have Pesach and Motzei Shabbos, you have to shech the animal on Shabbos because that's when the Torah said you have to shech it. And uh, and similarly, you know, the tamid, the uh, you know, the tamid has to be has to be brought. Or beyond, so there, there is the, the shkita is permitted. Yom Kippur also, no? Sorry, Yom Kippur also. Yeah, Yom Kippur also. Okay, same, right, same, right. same, same. But there's no, there's no olasri e on Yom Tov, uh, no. on, uh, for for Yom Kippur. No. The olasri is for circus, not for Yom Kippur. But you can still check on Yom Tov on Yom Kippur because if it's on Shabbos, you, yeah. Yeah, Yom Kippur has got the same din as uh, as Shabbos, except for um, you know the the kares, it, it's kares for Yom Kippur and it's and it's misa for for Shabbos. That's the only difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we just learned that in Megillah. Remember, en ben en ben Yom Kippur or Yom Shabbos ella Shabbos bide Adam the the Yom Kippur bide Shemay. Okay, and um. Okay, so they agree that if that if Yom Tov falls on Shabbos, so Yom Tov after Shabbos. gadol mislabesh But on if you have Shavuos, and we're speaking, we we specifically talking about Shavuos. We say on the Sunday. Let's say you have this um, this Yom Tov that that happens on on a Sunday. They actually make an exception to the normal process that the Kohen Gadol doesn't wear his special clothes. Okay. Um, which you would normally on on the, on the Yom Tavuach, uh, on the day of a lot of, of, of Shrita, in order to be in fire saying that this is not Yom Tov. Why do they have to do that? Because remember the Tzedukim and the, the Karaites, they read into Usfaratim Lachem Mimacharas Shabbos. They say that the, the, the Spirit of Omer has to happen from starting from Motzei Shabbos. And therefore Shavuos always falls on a Sunday for them. So when for us Shavuos falls on a Shabbos, we and and a whole bunch of the and a whole bunch of the observations are pushed over to the Sunday. We want to make a very clear point that Sunday is not Yom Tov. Right, right. That's okay. That's okay. Right. Okay. The end point: Gadol Nislabesh Bekelav Umotarim Behespeid Uvatanis. And on that day, 
you are permitted to make his spadium end fast. Which is interesting because our, our minhag nowadays actually is not to, we, we don't say tachanon for, for six days after, after Shavuos because those are the days when you would have brought your, uh, your korbanos. Okay. Um, but here, yeah, this Mishnah is very clearly saying that you're muta to make a hespade, you're muta to fast, especially not to uh, give chizuk to the people who, who are saying that Shavuos is always on a Sunday uh, because of Mimachras um, Shabbos, which we know, according to Masorah, means the Yom Tov of Pesach. Okay, that's it for new Mishnahs today. Moid okay. Katan. Oh, um, here we are. We may build a railing for a roof or for a balcony or in an unskilled manner, but not in a professional manner. We may replaster the cracks and roll them as if they were with a roller, with the hand and with the foot, but not with the trowel. A hinge, a socket, or a beam, or a lock, or a key that broke may be repaired during cold moid, provided that one does not plan his work for cold moid. All pickled foods that can be eaten during the festival may be pickled during cold moid. One who turned over his olives to soften them and then mourning befell him, or an accident befell him, or his workers misled him, may, may place the first beam and leave it until after the festival. And that's the opinion of Reb Yehuda. Reb Yossi says he may pour the olives into the pit press, complete the process, and seal the barrels in his usual manner. Similarly, one whose wine was in the vat and does then mourning befell him, or an accident befell him, or his workers misled him, may pour the wine into barrels, complete its processing, and seal the barrels in his usual manner, and that's the opinion of Reb Yossi. Reb Yehuda says he may cover the barrels with boards so that the wine does not sour. Okay. Rosh Hashanah Gimel Dalet. On fast days, there are a ram's horns curved and with silver plated mouthpieces and with two trumpets in the middle. The shofar blows short and the trumpets blow long for the commandment of the day is with the trumpets. The Jubilee year is similar to Rosh Hashanah regarding the blowing of the shofar and the benedictions. Rabbi Yehuda says on Rosh Hashanah we blow with ram's horns and the Jubilee years we blow with wild goat's horns. A shofar that was split and he glued it together is invalid. If he glued together broken pieces of a shofar, it's invalid. If there is a hole in the shofar and he sealed it, uh, sealed it, if it hinders the blowing, it is invalid. And if not, it is valid. Okay. okay. Hey, Zayn Aleph. So, how do we roast? Um, how do we roast the Pesach? We bring a spit of pomegranate wood and thrust it through from its mouth to its anus and place its knees and its entrails inside. These are the words of Rabbi Yosef Agili. Rabbi Akiva says this is considered a form of cooking. Rather, they are hung outside it. We may not roast the Pesach offering either on a metal spit or a roasting pan. Reb Sadek says it once happened that Reb Kamil said to uh, Tavi, his slave, go out and roast for us the Pesach offering on the roasting tray. If he touched the earthenware in the oven, he must pare off its place. If some of the juice drips into the earthen onto the earthenware and drip back onto it, he must remove its place. If some of the juice dripped on the flour, he must remove a handful from its place. If he smeared it with oil of truma, if the group is composed of kahanam, they may eat. If it is composed of Israelites, then if it is raw, he must rinse it, but if it is roasted, he must par the outside. He smeared it with oil of the second tithe. Its value may not be charged to the uh, members of the company, since second tithe may not be redeemed in Yerushalayim. Okay. Okay. Above, uh, above, um, above, hey. yeah. What is a Sarek tree? A tree that bears no fruit. Reb Meir says all trees are Sarek trees except the olive tree and the fig tree. Reb Yossi says all, as, all such are as not planted throughout the whole fields are Sarek trees. Gaps in an aris, eight, um, eight amis and somewhat more. And among none of the measurements which the Chachamim fixed in regard to the vineyard is there a little more, except in the case of the Aris. What constitutes ga gaps in the Aris? An Aris laid waste in the middle in which five veins, vines were left on one side and five vines on the other side. If there are eight Amis, he may not bring seeds there, and eight Amis and somewhat more 
It has given it still its space, and it may grow the, so the rest. Kalayim. Uh, an arras which projects beyond the wall from the corner and stops is given in still its space and the rest may be sown. Rabbi Yossi says, if they are not for Ahmed, there are maybe one, that there, one may not bring seeds there. Okay. 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 We have um, Vav Zayn. There are instances in which the sages spoke of a large measure. A ladle full of corpse dust is measured against a full big physician's ladle. The split bean of Nagayim is measured against a split psyllian bean. One who eats on Yom Kippur, the volume of a large date, is liable if he ate the equivalent of it and its pit. The measure of skin bottles of wine and oil to lose their tumor is a hole the size of the large world. Regarding a window that was not made by a person, it's measured to spread, uh, it's measure to spread tumor is the size of a large fist. That is the fist of a Ben but, uh, Batatek. Batatek. Okay. Rabbi Yossi says the fist has the same proportions of a large human head. Regarding a window that was made by a person, it's measured to spread tumor is the size of the hole made by a large auger of the temple chamber. This is as large as an Italian pungent and is also as large as an Aronian cellar and is also as large as the hole in a yoke. Who is Ben? But he was a big guy, I guess. Um, yeah, up. yes, yes, he was a, he was a big person, uh, Ben Batiach. Um, yeah, he had a, he was known as having a large fist. <laughs> all right. Uh, big fist Ben. Yeah, good deal. All utensils made from sea creatures are Tahor, except utensils made from a sea dog, since it flees to dry land. These are the words of Rabbi Akiva. If one makes utensils from something that grows in the sea and attached to the attached to the utensils, something that grows on land, even a thread or a string, something that is susceptible to tumor, the utensils is susceptible to tumor. Okay. And what? Your dalit as well? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. There are some items that were created on the first day that are susceptible to tumor. That was created, which was, that which was created on the second day is not susceptible to tumor, and that which was created on the third day is susceptible to tumor. That created on the fourth and fifth days are not susceptible to tumor, with the exception of a utensil made from the wing of an oz and a plated naamis na egg. Rabbi Yochan Abenuri said, what is the difference between the wing of an oz and the wings of all other birds? Everything that was created on the sixth day is tummy. Okay. And we have Sanhedrin. Stalin. Um, hey, darling. Yes, darling. Hey, 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 darling. Correct, right? No, yes, darling. Maybe you're hey. Maybe you're. No, no, my It's my eyes. That's right. Yeah. Um, if his father was willing and his mother was not, or his father was not willing and his mother was willing, he does not become a ben or amora, unless they are both willing. Rabbi Huda says his mother did not correspond to his father. He does not become a ben or amora. If one of them is missing a hand, or one was lame, mute, blind, or deaf, he does not become a Ben Sarma Omaora. As it is said, and his father and mother shall seize him, which excludes those missing a hand, and they shall take him out, which excludes the lame, and they shall uh, and they shall say, which excludes the mute, this son of ours, which excludes the blind, does not heed our voice, which excludes, excludes the deaf. They warn him before three and flog him. If he repeats his misdeed, he is judged by 23. He is not stoned unless the original three are present, as it is said, this son of ours, this son who was flogged in your presence. If he fled before the sentence was pronounced and his lower beard then grew around, he is exempt. If he fled after the sentence was pronounced and his lower beard then grew around, he is liable. Is it, was it, is this a Ben Sahar? They said there never was a Ben. Uh, yeah, we never had, we never had such a place, right, correct. Right. The, the, you, if you see all these Mishnayas there, there there's like, defining down the possibility of, of actually convicting somebody and executing them to the point where it's actually practically impossible. Right, right. A ben, or, a ben Sarama Umaora is judged according to his eventual outcome. Let him die innocent, not guilty. For the death of the wicked is beneficial to them and beneficial to the world, but that of the righteous is detrimental to them and detrimental to the world. Wine and sleep for the wicked are beneficial to them 
and beneficial to the world. But for the righteous, they are detrimental to them and detrimental to the world. Dispersal of the wicked is beneficial to them and beneficial to the world, but that of the righteous is detrimental to them and detrimental to the world. Assembly of the wicked is detrimental to them and detrimental to the world, but that of the righteous is beneficial to them and beneficial to the world. Tranquility for the wicked is detrimental to them and detrimental to the world, but for the righteous it is beneficial to them and beneficial to the world. One who enters through a tunnel is judged according to its eventual outcome. If he was coming through a tunnel and he broke a barrel, if his blood is accountable, he is liable. If his blood is not accountable, he's exempt. Because right, we said that if somebody is high, if somebody's high of Misa, then he's then he's patter from the Mazikin. So uh, if he right. came in under circumstances where he, where the householder would have been would have been permitted to kill him in self-defense. Yeah. Then, uh, if he causes damages, then he's putter because he he had, he would have his, his life would have been forfeit. But if it, if it's a circumstance where he where the householder would not have been allowed to kill him in self defense, then he is liable for the damages that he causes. Okay. Thank Sorry. you so much. Have a great day. Have a good rest. You're gonna rest up. I uh, rest up. I, I, I got I got home yesterday morning, so um, oh, I, I had I had a good night's sleep. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Take care. I'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Shem. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers.